nuggets. Okay, so I've been having to think today about uh, what I'm going to do with my life. <laughs> I'm a teenager. I'm still having that. I went to my career counselor in my head. Um, and um, so here are the things that I've been told over my life. Okay, so I'm trying to think of this laterally, right? Um, here are things I've been told over the course of my life. Okay, one is that I'm very funny. I can make people laugh. I don't think I can, I can do that only with context, though, I believe. Um, like in the moment, I can say something quick and funny and make people laugh and it's awesome and it's great. It's how I've managed to survive this long, looking like this and being this uh, unmotivated. So I think I can do that. Um, I don't see myself being a stand-up comedian. I can't imagine doing that i don't know if i've apart from the fact that that's a completely separate skill actually just being a funny person and being a comedian those things are related but that one doesn't necessarily follow the other it's a particular it's a craft being a comedian a stand-up comedian um and i know a few stand-up comedians who aren't even remotely funny in real life uh but you know when they're writing when they sit down they nail their material when they get in front of an audience something comes out of them and it changes them so I don't know whether I could be a stand-up comedian. I also, I have a, a friend who I haven't seen for a long time called Peter. I actually mentioned him on a previous one who went to, who did a comedy routine at a club. What was the name of the club in Hollywood? The Kettle Club or something like that? I can't remember what it's, God, that's annoying. Anyway, he went, he, he told me he was going to do it. He didn't tell me when, so I couldn't go see it. But he did it and it was just, it was like a little routine he did. It was, it was about spreadsheets, but it was a ridiculous one about spreadsheets. And um, he was playing like, I think a management consultant in it or something. But the point is he had the courage to get up and do it. And Peter was very funny, very dry, um, sense of humor, but he was a very funny guy. I adored him, loved sitting next to him at work. He was just always amused me, just light of my day, that guy. So he got up and did it. I remember when he got up to do it, when he told me rather that he got up to do it. Uh, firstly, I was upset that he didn't let me know because I really would have loved to have seen him perform. Um, but secondly, I realized something kind of switched on in me. as like, oh, I could never do that. I could never stand up in front of those people. He said it went well, right? But what if it hadn't? What if they hadn't liked him that night? I don't know if I have the inner strength deal with that i think if anyone were i would be more of a mitch hedberg you know who had like devastating stage fright mitch hedberg which he got over i think by wearing dark glasses and never looking at the audience just kind of pretending they weren't there i'd have to be that kind of guy but that isn't that's not how i'm funny i'm not funny with one-liners and obscure thoughts i'm funny in the moment responsive you know if i could act i would be an improv comedian there you go that's that's where it would go but i can't do any of those things but maybe that's just years of not trying. Maybe I need to go to an improv group and just see. Maybe I need to try that. It's a bit late to be starting a career, I think, but fuck it, I don't know. I've got to find something. So that popped into my head. And then I thought a little bit more about, okay, well, what about this YouTube thing? What can I do? And I'd said before about, you know, I know it's not a career, but, but something to engage myself with, that, to open some doors, right? Just open some doors and see what happens. Um, and that I felt that I didn't really open the door on YouTube before I just kind of peaked and what I'm doing now is not gonna, no one's gonna watch this shit you know or a small group is but it's not like I'm I'm not gonna get a thousand subscribers 10,000 subscribers just by talking shit in front of the camera it's just not gonna work it's, people aren't interested in that no one's gonna wake up and go I can't wait to hear what he rambled on about today that fat fucker what's he got to say let's go honey get the kids it's not gonna happen so um, I thought about the YouTube thing and I thought, okay, what could I do on YouTube, right? And I talked about games and I talked about uh, development, game development. I'm not a teacher and all that. But then I thought, you know what I love to do? <laughs> I love to cook and I'm a good cook. I'm a very good cook. I think I am. My wife thinks I am. Maybe, maybe that's every husband and wife thinks that. They always think their spouse is a good cook. I really do think I am a good cook now. And it's taken a long time for me to become a good cook because uh, my palate 
was uh, just junk food basically. But now I cook, you know, I cook steaks very well. I cook ribs. I cook pasta sauces. I cook chilies. I cook stews. Um, I cook just in general. I'm good at cooking. I can t- turn my hand to something. I can do. It. I can bake a little bit. I've made bread before. The bread's not great, but I w- I know I would get better. That's the thing. Even something I can't cook, I feel comfortable enough in my core understanding of the fundamentals of cooking that I could do it. I understand temperatures, I understand flavor palettes, I understand spices and stuff like that. So I think I could become better at that. But there's a lot of cooking YouTube channels and I fall into the same problem I had when I was making my game. This is why it's all connected. I made a game called Demon Defense, which I posted, blogged about yesterday. And I have the same problem here, which is, but what am I bringing to it that's different? And that in turn, sorry about the ramble, led me to think that there is a difference between true creativity and creative skill. And I think what I have is creative skill. Right, so I can take a concept to make it better. I can have someone pitch an idea to me and I can help shape and form it. I can have an art director say that a level should look like this in a game and I can craft it and shape it to look like that. I can get, I can give feedback and I can take feedback. But the inspirational idea, like the thing that's really kind of thinking out of left field, which is the way a great artist thinks, I worry I don't have that. I worry I don't have that spark, you know. Um, Like when I was working at Naughty Dog on The Last of Us. So I joined Naughty Dog. I worked on Uncharted 4. And then they pulled us all over to, to The Last of Us to help ship it, right? To do bug mode. And... I think I was a really good bug fixer. I, I made some, <laughs> I actually fucked one level up completely. I fucked up all the collision. But, but anyway, you know, in general, I think I'm a very good bug fixer because I have a creative skill. So I know how not to upset the form, the vision. I know how like, oh, well, that's a core component of this vision. So I'm not going to touch that. And yet I'm also technical enough to, to fix these bits and pieces. So I, when I would walk in and have a list of bugs, I actually felt really comfortable. I'm like, okay, I know that I can do this very well. I can do this at a very high level. And I would be one of the better people in this company at fixing these bugs, preserving the vision of the designer and the, the people who, the designer, the animator, the artist, all of those people who have created the level. I can preserve that vision and just tweak it and edge it and get rid of the bugs and kind of shift it into the next gear. But it's not my work. The stuff I did in The Last of Us... I came up with a few things, but really it wasn't my work. It was mostly the work of the designers. Peter Field was one of the designers. I can't remember the others, God. But it was their content. And then I came in and helped polish it at the last hurdle. Stuff they would have done without me, they just didn't have time, right? So, but that's a creative skill. That's not a truly creative artist. And I think I have it in me, I just haven't found it. I haven't found it because I think we all have it in there. Like there needs to be a spark. Maybe it comes from confidence. Maybe it comes from just belief. Like being, getting your 10,000 hours. If you you know that, I think it's what color is your parachute or is it something else? But where you've done something for 10,000 hours, you're an expert, right? I have my 10,000 hours in game design, but I don't feel an expert. So what the fuck? (laughs) You know, I look at these independent games, like there's a game that's really hot on Reddit and various other places right now called Among Us. It was actually released a few years ago, but where it's a multiplayer game and one of the people in the game is an imposter, right? And you have to figure out who it is. They have to do their dirty deeds of murdering people on the crew without other crew watching. And then at the end of the round, you get to guess. I think that's the imposter and the imposter goes, no, it's not me, it's yellow. And it's, you know, that's a very inventive idea for a game. And when you hear it, it's so clever because when you hear it, you think, wait, that's been done before, surely. Wait, that's not a new idea, is it? No, probably not. But the concept and the way it came together was great. Now, if someone pitched that to me, I could make that game superbly. But I don't know if I'm coming up with the idea. That's the issue. And like I said, either that means I'm missing that little creative spark, that extra thing, But my gut tells me I have it. I just haven't found it. I haven't found the key to unlocking it. So whether I'm doing 
YouTube videos on cooking, YouTube videos where I'm just pouring shit out at you, like relentlessly, whether I'm playing games, um, I haven't found the spark. Now they say, you know, do what you know when you're writing, write what you know, and it's the same with anything, do what you know. Well, if I know how to be funny, maybe that is the thing that sets me apart. Okay, so what field would being funny set me apart? Well, actually, streaming games, right? If I'm a game streamer, I've watched quite a few streams of games, and they're consistently unfunny. These people are not very funny people. They're either very young, and so they're appealing because they're cute, and they're good looking, um, or they're a little bit whiny, and they want your money, or they're just, you know, whatever. They're just like, PewDiePie, I've got nothing against PewDiePie. I don't even know if he's still big, but I've got nothing against him. But his career is because he's pretty good at playing games. He's good at communicating his feeling at that particular moment. And he's good looking. So I'm not saying he's not talented because he has talent in those areas. He's not funny. <laughs> Dude's not funny even remotely. And he's not that entertaining, but he has charisma. So, you know, he has that thing. So maybe my thing as a streamer would be, I'm funny. While I do it, I follow this other guy. I've mentioned him a long time ago on this channel called Loki Doki, who does Football Manager. Now, he is funny. That guy is funny, whether he means to be or not. He does know. He knows what he's doing. He's very funny. But I don't think there's many funny YouTubers, to be honest with you. I, I'm not talking about comedian YouTubers. I'm talking about game streamers. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'll just fucking ramble on a video every single day for the rest of my life trying to discover this shit. But I don't know. And it's, I don't think it's something that other people can tell you, right? Like, if people watch this, my friends will say, yeah, you're really good, you should do that. But everyone says that, you know, that's, that's just being a nice person. You have to find it yourself. You have to find the thing yourself and have confidence. I have a friend called Colette, who again, I've spoken to on this. I need some of her juju, man, because she's just balls to the wall confident. She doesn't give a fuck. It's amazing. And she does give a fuck. Here's the thing, I know she does inside, but she's got the strength of character to overcome her fear and take it on and expose herself. You know, she used to be in sports. She used to be uh, an All-American at lacrosse. I think it was lacrosse. And she's, that, that spirit of competition, you know, that willingness to put everything on the line and risk being a failure um, has actually served her extremely well in her career because she's now a writer and she was an actor and she produces she's written musicals and books and that was a good timing a fly came through right then get out pence um so i need a bit of her juju i need to kind of channel that kind of energy that she has she's also very motivated which i'm not and it's all tied into diet and here we go again i'm back to the same fucking bullshit kill me now all right anyway I thought I'd post about that. If I get an idea for something to do with YouTube, because I don't want to just fish around like I do with games. With games, with games, and a lot of game designers will recognize this. You come up with an idea, you start it, you organize the project, you get some assets together, base assets, you come up with a naming structure, you kind of structure your project, you spreadsheet, as it were. That bit's fucking awesome. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's so much fun because every task is just there laid out and you're like, little bit of creativity, got it, right, move on. But then you get into the meat of it and you start to lose your passion. And so I have a tendency to restart games over and over and over again, which is why Demon Defense was so disappointing because I thought I'd broken through that barrier. And then I got a knockback with people just not interested in it and I gave up, you know. I haven't given up yet, but I haven't done it for a while, so. But is that going to be the same with YouTube and whatever? Why the fuck with all these flies? Is that my dog? Is it you? Where are you? It's him. That's Django. Um, anyway, and this one's Ziggy. Hi, boy. I don't know. All right, little nuggets. That's my ramble for the day. Hopefully my YouTube videos won't be like my games career. And I'll just be dick career. I'll be digging in to something and actually commit to it and have the confidence and tenacity to see it through. I just got to figure out what it is. Maybe it's games. Maybe I start streaming games again and I start publicizing. Maybe I buy, oh, there's a new football manager coming out. I mentioned that. Maybe I get that when it comes out. Maybe I sign up for the beta right now. and Because, you know, that will give me the advantage if there's, 
people are going to want to see content. They're excited about the new game. They want to see content. And it wouldn't sustain anything. But how would I feel if I got 1,000 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers? What would I feel about that? Would I suddenly get scared or would I say, well, let's go. This is, a, this is what I want to do. I'm good at this. I don't know. It's up to you. Anyway, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Like. I don't care if you subscribe because I haven't got content. I'm not worthy of it. But I, it would be great if people liked the video. If only because I want to know if it actually does anything. Like, because I can tell you how many views I get on my videos. I get like 10 views a month. Ballpark. I don't know. It change, depends on the content, obviously. But um, I did a video about Proud Boys and people are watching that shit. But in general, I would say about 10 to 20 a month. I want to see if I actually get like even just 10 likes. Does that change the algorithm? Does, does it start getting viewed? I don't know. It would be interesting. So actually, don't subscribe. Please like. All right. See you, little nuggets. Bye.